Hello everyone, this is the introduction to writer development talk. Uh, I'm Miklos, um, I'm here with LibriOffice uh, for a while now. Um, I initially uh, worked on the writer RTF import and export as a student and then uh, focused um, on writer in general and I now do this at uh, Colbert. Um, the focus for uh, this talk will be to give you a kind of guide or tutorial on writer internals um, because it seems that uh, we have reasonably good reference documentation in case you want to go to this or that class, C++ class, and understand what it does, then um, perhaps it will have good um, like Doxygen documentation or we have some nice uh, wiki pages or some readmes that describe this and that. But how to get started, uh, how to get a good overview is, is more tricky. Um, the, perhaps the, one of the resources is a similar writer course um, from like almost 10 years ago. <laughs> Uh, so it seemed like a good idea to um, refresh that and um, um, build some material that um, that is up to date um, at least as of this year. Um, so first, um, when you do any kind of writer development, then there are a number of tools that can help you. It's good in case you are aware of them because then you can search for uh, for them and see what they do. What if you don't even know that there is such a tool, then it's very hard to search. So be sure that you are reasonably familiar with Git, um, doing a Git log on files, running Git blame on uh, chunks of code, doing Git bisect to see where some good or bad behavior started is, is useful. Uh, make sure that um, you can navigate the code base uh, efficiently. Uh, that might be with some ID integration, uh, there is this um, CTEX or ID UTS uh, that uh, can uh, index the code base for you uh, offline so that you can uh, quickly jump to the definition of some number function. Uh, be aware of the docs LibreOffice org, which is a um, doxygen output for the code base. Uh, there you can nicely see if um, a certain C++ class has which subclasses and stuff like this. Uh, be familiar with the debugger. Um, on Linux, that's GDB, but it can be anything else. Um, know that um, the Uno API has specific um, debugging tools like this document inspector in the menu item, or for example, Xtray is a basic extension that, that can do this for you. Um, and um, and um, be familiar with the various uh, units that we use. Uh, there is a, um, in the DevTools Git repo, there is a um, typography conversion to which will quickly uh, convert like centimeters to tweets for you and so on. Uh, be sure that you are familiar with this uh, unit. Uh, be sure that uh, you have at least one editor where you are comfortable with and it's focused on, on editing. So for myself, that's VIM, but it can be Emacs or VS Code or whatnot. But be sure that you are, you are effective with that one. Um, in many cases, there will be some larger amount of data that you want to like um, uh, print and, um, and, and interpret. Um, understand that we have this cell debug macro, which is for debugging output locally, uh, that uses the, um, um, the kind of built-in pretty printer of objects. For, so for example, the writer cursor position is pretty printed nicely. Um, also, we use pretty printing in other cases, like uh, in ODT or docx files. It's it's really a one-line or zip file in a uh, XML file in a zip file. Uh, so, in case your editor can do that, then uh, then um, you can open such zip files in the editor, um, edit the XML files in place, have pretty printing for them. Um, also, for binary doc files, we have a doc dump one. Uh, which uh, will give you some re more or less readable output of what's in the binary. And there are these various specifications for these five formats. Um, it's, it's good to know where they are and in case some element or some, some, some markup is, is unfamiliar to you, then it makes sense to read it. 
So where is the code for Writer? Um, it has uh, like Writer Core, um, LibreOffice Core has many modules. Um, here is a subset that is potentially interesting for um, for writer hacking. Uh, there is the SW module uh, standing for Star Writer, but that's where most of the code is. Uh, some of the ODF import export code is in the XML Office module. Uh, there is a dedicated writer filter for the docx and RTF import. Um, for the shared uh, docx part, um, there is the OX module and there is Talmud um, where, um, where the OXML import and export and uh, yeah, that that happens for the for the math equations. Um, now let's try to go through the various layers of writer. So there is the document model, which is like the the C plus plus classes representing what will be like edited by the UI and what's loaded from files and what's serialized to files. Um, so the document model is kind of the model from this uh, model view controller paradigm. Um, our view is called the layout and in, in the code base, the controller is kind of the shell in case you want to have a mental model of that. Uh, SW doc is one opened writer document and inside that the most uh, important building block is a list of paragraphs and we call those text nodes. So the SW doc has a list of nodes. Um, and um, uh, writer has then various other containers for, for the document model, like it has a list of page styles, it has writer sections, um, inside paragraphs the individual pieces of um, like characters having the same character formatting, that's text portions. Um, this is more or less maps to what Word has, which is used as a reference in, in many cases. Um, so in Word has sections and sometimes we map those to page styles and sometimes to writer sections. Paragraphs are the same and in, on their side these, these uh, smaller things inside the paragraphs are quadrants. But it's really similar to text portions. So one question is how uh, properties are stored inside the, the uh, text node. Um, so the SW text node has um, the paragraph text as a Unicode string and then uh, we have each and every property on that paragraph is stored as a pool item. Um, the pool item is something like it can store a string, a number, a boolean or something and it's stored in an item set which, which is a container for these pool items. So it's kind of a map which has integer keys and it can have basically any value. Uh, this key is called uh, which ID and for writer there is a specific uh, C++ header which contains all of these IDs. Um, then, um, so what you see in the, in the, um, in the class diagram here is at the layout level we will have a text frame for the paragraph. In the document model level, we will have a text node for the paragraph and that has a Unicode string and then uh, there will be the, the various um, uh, pool items in this uh, attribute array uh, for, the, for the paragraph. And inside the frame we will have, uh, at the layout level, we will have the, the paragraph, uh, the, the, the portions. Uh, we will get to that in a minute. Uh, so um, a bit more words on this. Um, container for the for the pool items. Um, this is more or less, um, it's a map, uh, it's a special one, it knows uh, what are the ranges uh, of keys which are possible to store there. If you don't, um, if you want to store a pool item which is outside those ranges that will be ignored and you can debug that like uh, what is stored there with the count that's you know. Uh, for the character attributes that um, a separate container, uh, we call those hints and then uh, hints may have uh, just a starting point. For example, a field is always a single dummy character or you can have a start and end. For example, you mark three characters as bold, then um, you want to have a start and an end for them. Now, uh, in case you want to debug the document model, 
um, you have a number of approaches and it's good to be familiar with these because in different cases different ones um, are are more useful so one thing is that in gdb um, you can uh, call this get nodes function and that will give you a list of paragraphs in the in the like uh, inside gdb itself um, another one is that um, there is a document model xml dump that you can press um, shift 12 or to, uh, shift F12 or F12 to generate the layout dump or the document model dump. And in the current directory, there will be an XML file for you and that will contain C++ pointers and all, all kinds of internal details. And the last thing is that there is this extension called X-Ray that um, you can uh, run in, it's kind of a improved print statement and uh, you can, um, run that inside, for example, the basic ID, and that gives you a good access to the various UNO properties on an object and what functions are supported, what in UNO interfaces and so on. It's basically a debugger, but it has domain knowledge about our uh, UNO concept. And based on that, um, yeah, sometimes that's, that's a better way. Uh, I see that I'm a little bit behind um, schedule, so I will skip the actual interactive demo but um, the point is that inside the SW module, in case you uh, search in the read wisdom, you can, you can find instructions how to get the X-ray and the XML dump working. And um, it's, it's a good idea to try that out uh, with some two paragraph uh, simple document. Now to the UNO API, um, this is something public, so we try to not change it, uh, but um, at the same time, uh, most of the ODF filter is using the UNO API. So whenever you add a new feature, then typically you want to expose that in the UNO API as well. Uh, the, and the hope is that this is a bit higher level than the raw C++ code, which means that it's possible to refactor the, or change the C++ core without breaking um, uses of the UNO API. So there is a bit of separation between the two. Um, when adding um, a new feature, uh, my preferred way is that I always add the UNO API right after uh, having the document model because then um, I can um, exercise the feature uh, from a simple basic macro. Um, another approach is that to implement the UI early and then you can just use the UI. That also works. It has the downside that perhaps uh, somebody will try the UI uh, too early and we conclude that it's broken because of course the feature is not yet ready and complain so that's uh, that's one problem there but it's it's fair enough to to use that approach as well um, then for the actual properties uh, the the way we expose them on the UNO API is that most uh, pool item has a query value and put value uh, function and based on that you can map UNO properties to one part of a, a pool item. So one pool item is mapped to one or more you know, properties typically. Um, then uh, <clears throat> we get to the layout. A uh, layout is basically a giant cache. Um, you can see that in case our document model is just a list of paragraphs, then it's very expensive to actually paint pixels on the screen because you don't know what, where are the pages and so on. So what we try to do is we create our presentation on how things will appear on the screen, like what will be the screen position or the logical position of a paragraph, uh, what will be its left uh, top coordinate, what will be the right one, the bottom one, um, uh, where will be the pages and so on. If we try to initially build this and later we incrementally update that. And then based on that, the actual rendering will be somewhat uh, cheap because the layout already contains exactly what piece of text to uh, paint where and so on. Um, so there is this um, mechanism that um, for each and every node, there is a frame. So for text nodes, you have text frames and so on. Uh, so here is some, some um, diagram on, on how things look on the layout. So there is one root frame. And then in this case, it's a, in the document has two pages. And then inside that you can have headers, footers, and body tags. And inside the body tags, you can have the text frames. And these can be split between pages. 
and um, and there are various pointers to navigate with this graph with this tree up down to the next one previous one and even logically connecting things like a paragraph at the end of the page and at the start of the next page it's it's a follow or 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 a precede um, inside the paragraph there is no more frames it's um it's called portions we have a dedicated portion type for the entire paragraph then the, at the start of the line and the normal line portion one um, one item one cell in this kind of table uh, then we have notifications between the the nodes uh, to the frames uh, this is called this lw modify and client uh, mechanism um, and in general this is like one model assigned can notify one or more um, layout sign but then uh, kind of recently Michal um, added support for this layout level on a red line um, like change tracking hiding and showing so you know there are cases where, where multiple paragraphs are merged to a single text frame or um, a, a single text frame is uh, visible with multiple single text node is visible with multiple text frames so this merge paragraph is is one way um, to kind of relax this through that one model position is one or more layout um, layout object um, then um, one as an, as an aside um, in the um, a word case um, the um, complex geometry uh, shapes like uh, triangles and rounding corners and whatnot can contain complex content in writer core uh, these are um, represented with a combination of a draw shape with complex geometry and then there is kind of an invisible writer frame text frame um, inside that which can contain the complex content but at the UNO API and UI this is this separation is not visible it's just a pair that works together then uh, filters is like storing the data in the document model and loading it back in practice we try to do a really really good jo job with odf and then for every other format we, we try a good job but it it can always happen that there is something in writer which is not stored to one of these formats um so for the odf filter um most of the code is using the uno api and it's in this xml off module uh, some writer specific bits are in, uh, in inside the writer core um, this filter slash xml directory uh, but that's really rare uh, so that's um, that's more like in case it's not in xml off and you wonder what is the magic then this is the magic but otherwise it's um, not that frequent that you need to dive into that code in the sw side and otherwise, in case we extend the ODF filter, then we always try to write up some schema bits on like what is the new markup, and you can submit um, um, ODF proposals to have your new markup included in the next version of ODF. Um, then DOCAX is the uh, add-on important filter because that's the, the majority of the new Word documents are created in those formats, and people expect that we read and write those um those formats um so the import side is in the writer filter uses the uno api um uh, there is this um there is some code generation involved there i will get to that in a moment and it has its own debugging output this um, sw debug writer filter output which is some xml file which um, logs the traffic between the two steps of docx import and one is some tokenization and then handling those tokens and the export site has a much simpler architecture it's a subclass from the binary doc export and um, it um, is just a C++ code, no you know, API, no code generation. Uh, for the shared parts of the OXML um, filter, like the DOCX filter, um, the shape import and export is shared with XLSX and PPTX. Um, there is also the, not the newer shape markup drawing ML, but the older shape markup VML that's um, mostly interesting for exporter because on import time we only look at the uh, drawing ML and also math is kind of living it on its own board so it has its own oxymal import 
of them. Uh, fast parser is an important concept. Um, nowadays, even the UDF filter is using that, and initially just the OXML filter was using that. Um, so we deal with a lot of um, um, namespace strings and element names and attribute names, attribute values, but we know what are the possible values there because it's in the SPAC. Uh, so what we can do is to generate um, a large map for this, and then uh, first we map the strings to a, an integer, and then we work with those IDs later, which is cheaper than copying strings around and comparing these. So uh, XFast parser does this. Um, and the other thing is that you can easily end up with a huge C++ class handling the entire import for the single, uh, for, the, for the entire file format. And what we try to do is, um, especially in the, the UDF filter, is that for each and every XML element, there is a dedicated C++ class. Uh, we call these contacts. And then when we see a sub element or a child element, then we create a child context for that. And that's how it works. So it's uh, good to familiarize yourself with that concept um, to help debugging. And now for the docx import part, uh, some code generation is, uh, is happening uh, at build time. So what we do is, um, uh, there is a model XML file, which is um, the relax ng scheme from the OXML spark, but then we annotate that with our own information. Uh, what we do is we take um, XML elements and attributes. Uh, we, we map XML elements to these property modifier tokens, and that can contain attribute tokens. Um, and the RTF import does the same, and then um, later when we handle tokens, we can have shared code between the two formats. And um, what um, we do there is, um, uh, once the, the OXMR Relax NG scheme is, is, is there, we add matching resource uh, XML elements, and that defines how to map these XML elements and attributes to tokens. Now, um, for the binary doc file, um, it's a um, format. It's the oldest writer importer and exporter. Um, we used to have this uh, binary star office format that used to be even uh, older. It was in the bin filter module, but it's now removed. Um, and the import and export is somewhat shared because in many cases, um, really, uh, the, what the file format has is more or less a memory dump, dump of the old word uh, structures. Um, so it makes sense that we have one C++ class which knows how to, let's say, map one word section to something writer. And then the same class will uh, take care of reading the writer document and building the same structure. And then we will write it to the, to, to the tree. Uh, it uses the internal API, um, which means that sometimes it's um, you you need to type a lot of code uh, to do something somewhat simple. On the other hand, it has random access to the document model that's sometimes useful. When we import, then we can easily look back and look around and make decisions based on that. Uh, let's say we are ending a paragraph and we want to know what is the last um, uh, floating table that we imported. Is it anchored in us or not? That's very easy to do um, with full access, random access uh, to the internal document model. Um, it would not be that easy uh, with the UNO API. Um, and uh, here again, there is some uh, XLS and PPT parts shared, uh, like the, the shape markup or the shape binary format that's in the MS filter directory of the filter module. And when I started um, working on the binary doc format, it was like very, very hard because it's, it's not that readable. And I did not really find a good uh, dumper that would give you some more readable XML-like output for some binary file. Uh, so uh, I, I took this MSO dumper project, which already had 
nice XLS and PPT support and I did a doc one so you might want to use that when debugging uh, so RTF uh, RTF is uh, my favorite one uh, although it's kind of underused by now so it's, it's not that relevant except perhaps for copy paste um, the um, export is uh, shared with doc and docax um, it's the same subclass as, as doc and docax um, on the export side uh, import is shared with docax um, Basically, we take these uh, RTF control words and we turn them into tokens, and then the token the these tokens are handled by the same domain mapper, mapping from the word domain to the writer domain uh, that will actually perform those Uno calls. Um, uh, on the mat side, uh, this is really similar to to DocAx. Um, the import will generate um, OXML uh, tokens, and uh, the export is shared with docx as well uh, now let's say that you have some understanding on how the code base looks like you make some change and you want to test it test it in a as in like you want to make sure that ideally no old behavior is broken and you want to lock down the new behavior so that it remains fixed um, the filter tests are kind of easy, uh, especially in case you work with ODF or OXML because you can, uh, the, the export result is, is uh, some XML, so you can use export asserts there, or um, for the import uh, result, you can assert what's in the document model. Um, the, um, for the binary or RTF format, that's a little bit more complicated. Um, and in general, the rest is more tricky. Uh, the, it's, the easy case is when you can find a similar test which already does something what you want and failing that what we typically do is look at how the ui normally exercises that piece of uh, functionality look at the, in the debugger what c++ uh, function calls it does and try to kind of mimic what the ui does on the in in the cpp init test and that's how we can exercise some functionality and then assert the result um then for the UI, uh, what we typically do is um, the, the code is kind of parallel to the UNO API. So the UNO API is kind of a UI and the actual UI is, is another one. If we will try to build, fill in some item set with various properties, fire the dialog, and once the dialog is done, we get back some item set and we will update the document model. Um, then it's good to not forget that we have some offline hub that tries to uh, describe uh, the, the function functionality of the office suite so in case you did some change then it's always a good idea to spend five minutes to see if um, the change the old behavior was described in the hub um, and then update that or in case you added something new then try to extend the relevant hub page so that users have an understanding of what you try to uh, implement um, and I briefly mentioned this, ODF is not just a specification similar to like DOCX or DOC or RTF, but it's something that uh, maintained by Oasis and you can submit um, proposals there. Um, so what we do is um, there is a, uh, first we, we always update the ODF filter, like add the new functionality there, but then we submit a proposal to Oasis and then um, then we, we, our intention is that the next ODF version will, will um, uh, have the feature um, in the standard and then other ODF implementers can also um, implement that in, in, in their implementation. So I guess that was more or less it. Um, and in, the last slide, in this last slide, I have some bookmarks for you. One thing is this uh, writer development wiki page. Um, which has the checklist for new features and uh, has uh, bookmarks for the ODF implementer notes and so on. The other thing is the SW module has a README for and has bookmarks for further wiki pages. Do read that. Like um, we spent some time on uh, filling that in with useful content. And like um, in the from the O build times, there were also two other um, like kind of um, overviews on writer core that is also interesting to read. I guess that was it. Thanks for your attention. Bye.